Debbie and I were talking um, this morning about the uh, Supreme Court because we're noticing a trend on the left to go after uh, Clarence Thomas. And the way they go after Clarence Thomas, at least this is the latest way, is to actually go after his wife. This is Ginny Thomas, whom we know, and uh, who's a feisty, uh, politically active, engaged, very interesting woman. And um, here is an article in CNN, which it says that the biggest threat to the legitimacy of the United States Supreme Court is not its potential expansion, nor the likely reversal of Roe v. Wade, it is Ginny and Clarence Thomas. What? Well, Jill Filipovic, who's the author of this article, goes on to say, oh, it's very troubling. You know, and, and her basic argument is this. I'm just going to sort of read it. Judges are supposed to evaluate cases impartially. What, honey? <laughs> <laughs> the, the left is discovering That's the virtues new. of impartiality. <laughs> They've got to just read the Constitution and apply it, you know. And then she, then she goes on to say, given his wife's involvement, there's no way for the public to trust that Thomas will impartially judge the cases. Now, what is his wife's involvement? Well, his wife appears on Zoom calls with guys from the Heritage Foundation. She's active in a whole bunch of political causes. Now, it's kind of weird, honey. You know, we, we, we've been hearing from the feminists, you know, women are not an extension of their husbands. Women have their own life. Women should have their own professional oh, involvement. But now, apparently, it's the one and the same. Now, suddenly, Ginny <laughs> uh, Thomas has no right to do any of this. This is really casting a doubt yeah, on Clarence yeah, Thomas yeah. and the Supreme Court. And, yeah. and, of course, your point was to stress the hypocrisy the hypocrisy, of this more importantly, the hypocrisy of this, because as we know, liberal judges are activists themselves, not their spouse, but themselves. They are activists. And and one example, I mean, well, there's several, but one of them is, is Sonia Sotomayor. She's the most uh, She's notorious. probably the most notorious. In fact, when she was nominated by, by Obama in, uh, in May of 2009, um, they they touted her as the people's justice. The people's justice. Now, how is it possible that a Supreme Court justice who is supposed to interpret the Constitution is a people's justice? I thought I thought that it was supposed to be blind. Didn't they just say that for, for Thomas and and you know? Right, and the people here is a phrase I think that needs to be decoded because whenever there's a case, there are people on both sides. Even in a case like abortion, yeah, you certainly have the woman's right, if you will, on the one side, and you have the fetus's mm -hmm. life mm -hmm. on the other. So people involved on both sides. And so when she says the people's justice, she's ideologically interpreting the people right. in a kind of quasi-Marxist leftist yeah. sense. Yeah, so in this, uh, in a National Review article uh, from, uh, I guess it was... 2016, maybe, they basically said, so you my yours, heated rhetoric seems to make reference to an overreaching, vi over overarching vision of the justice system that is flawed. Her belief that people with certain life experiences ought to ought to see the law differently has long been clear. So how is this not bad? Well, you know? right. What they're getting at here is the kind of application of almost a kind of critical race theory to the law, which is to say that sort of disadvantaged minorities uh, have one set of rules that apply to them and they mm -hmm. have a unique set of perspectives. They don't fall into the general kind of objective view of things. Uh, they ha they're looking at it from a different angle. And the judge needs to be a partisan mm -hmm. on their behalf. And That's obviously, what the yeah, and obviously she's not. In, in this case that, that was um, decided, um, she was basically trying to fix cosmic injustice. And, and that is not her job. I mean, Clarence Thomas, whatever you think, I mean, you can disagree with his rulings, but he's actually maintained the decorum of the court. Um, by contrast, here's Sotomayor in the wake of some of the uh, the court's recent uh, abortion considerations. She goes out there and she talks to young women and says, listen, you know, you're going to have to get out there. You're going you're gonna to get involved in the state uh, at the state level. You're going to have to be activists. You're gonna... So here's a Supreme Court justice literally engaging in outright activism. political <laughs> activism and <laughs> exhortation. Yeah. And meanwhile, meanwhile, sort of, I mean, I think Jill, Jill Philip, who wrote this article, knows all this, yeah, but she kind of conveniently yeah. forgets it. She puts yeah. it to the side. Yeah. Well, it's not even that. It's it's basically that she thinks it's okay for her side to do it, but not for our side to do it. That's basically the the 
the gist of it. Yeah. So you I, know? you know, I think that if you're the Thomases, you know, the idea here, I think, is to put moral pressure on Ginny Thomas to sort of step out of the arena. And my advice to Ginny Thomas is, hey, Ginny, you well, know what? Yeah. Laugh your head off at all this stuff. These mm-hmm. people are complete fakes. Mm-hmm. Their arguments make no sense. They're yeah. not applied consistently. Yep. So do not feel intimidated by this kind of foolishness. Yeah. And she's actually advocating for them to pass a law to make that illegal for Thomas to sit on the bench because of his wife. So imagine that. I mean, um, it's just pure I mean, hypocrisy. Yawn, snooze. <laughs> then that, that would mean no, that. No, that, that law's not going to happen, honey. This is just <laughs> no, pure. No, but bl- it's just so maddening. You know, it just makes me so, so, so upset when, when you know, they themselves elect or, you know, elect president, the, their, pre- their president on their side so that they actually put activists on the court. That's the whole reason. Well, it's the same so, the same thing the left does with the Constitution itself. Generally, they don't like the Constitution. They're always talking about the living oh, Constitution, yes. moving away from the yeah. Constitution. But when it comes to impeaching yeah. Trump, suddenly it's the founding yeah. fathers. Suddenly <laughs> the Constitution is dead. <laughs> suddenly the, the, a deep reverence for the Constitution yeah. obliges us to take these actions. Oh, yes. So oh, you're yes. dealing here essentially well, you with... you know what? We can see right through them. Yeah, I think that's the change here, that at least in the past, these people were smarter. They were more subtle. They would say things like, well, granted, we have activists on our side. And so there was at least some rhetorical effort to accommodate the other side of the earth. Now they pretend like there is no other side and they count on us to be total dummies and not notice. Wait a minute, activism? Isn't there a lot of activism going on your side? Well, sure there is.